A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, someone may say, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come back? You fool, what you sow is not brought to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that it is to be, but a bare kernel of wheat, perhaps, or of some other kind. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown corruptible. It is raised incorruptible. It is sown dishonorable. It is raised glorious. It is sown weak. It is raised powerful. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual one. So too, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first rather the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly. The second man, from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And as is the heavenly one, so also, also are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. Now I know that God is with me, in God in whose promise I glory, in God I trust without fear, what can flesh do against me? I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. I am bound, O God, by vows to you. Your thank offerings I will fulfill. For you have rescued me from death, my feet too from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. I will walk in the presence of God in the light of the living. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Thank you, Jesus. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, where it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell on thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. 
After saying this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. He answered, Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see, and hear but not understand. But this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard. But the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in a time of temptation. As for the seeds that fell among the thorns, there are the ones who, they are the ones who have heard. But as they go along, they are choked out by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as we have continued to make our way through 1 Corinthians, we find ourselves uh, these last few days in chapter 15, reflecting on the resurrection and the end of all things and what will that be. And, <clears throat> and in this reading today from 1 Corinthians, Paul is specifically reflecting on and answering the question as to the nature of our bodies upon the resurrection. What will this be like? And, and I think if we... Uh, know anything from the culture in which we live is we are very unhappy with our bodies, right? We do everything we can to try and fix this mortal shell, to try and prop it up, to uh, make it look younger than it actually is. And when you look at pictures today, 50-year-old pictures today of those in their 50s is very different than 30 years ago of people in their 50s or 40 years ago. Uh, uh, we all look really good in our older age because we've learned how to continue to mask the signs of aging. And, and we see that our culture is very uh, uncomfortable with this journey towards death. And it is very uncomfortable with death itself because one who has no hope in God no hope in eternity this is all that we live for and it would make sense that they would want to try and prolong this life as long as possible but for the Christian uh, death is not the end we have no fear of death we do not despair of death there is always sorrow in the loss of relationship, whether it's an untimely death that's extra sorrowful, or whether it's a death after a long, fruitful life, there is still sorrow in parting of that earthly relationship, which we know the relationship doesn't end as we enter into heaven. But Paul gives us some interesting things to reflect on in the nature of our bodies. He says, what you sow is not brought to life unless it dies. What you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel of wheat. Or perhaps some other kind. So we get this image that we are not these dualists. There have been various heresies throughout the histories that have wanted to diminish the physical body as if this is somehow a trapping that keeps us from God. A limitation. That has never been the Christian understanding. We are a body-soul composite. These two things go together, and I don't know if you have had that thought that you will spend eternity with a body. Not just a soul. We won't just be disembodied spirits. You will spend eternity with a body. Now, thanks be to God, God a glorified body. 
And what we sow right now, it's just a shell of what is to come. And you, you imagine that image that Paul gives of a seed. You put the seed in the ground, it looks nothing like what it becomes, no matter what you're planting. It is the same source, but it is totally transformed. He says, what is sown corruptible is raised incorruptible. We take the image of the earthly man, Adam, but then we receive the image of the glorified son. I don't know if you've ever thought about your pain. Whenever you have pain, the older we get, we get more aches and pains. Even when you're young, you might have aches and pains. My daughter, who is 21, has more back trouble than I do. So I always make fun of her and say, you sound like I should sound uh, at this age. And, but do you ever think about your pain as a reminder of redemption? That death is a result of the fall, right? God did not intend death. Death is the fruit of sin. Pain is the fruit of Sin, this, these infirmities, sickness, cancer, all of these things are the fruit of, of sin. Not our personal sin, not meaning I sinned so therefore God punished me, but this is the fallen world in which we live. Every time, though, we experience one of these infirmities, it should call our mind to the reality of redemption. Jesus Christ came to redeem us not just in soul, but in body. And that every one of those aches and pains is a reminder that Jesus entered into our world to redeem our entire person. And that our souls will be redeemed for eternity, but not just our souls, our bodies as well. And Paul gives us some reflection here of what it will be, but he says we don't exactly know what it's going to look like, but we get a glimpse in the risen Lord, right? One who had a body. He ate fish, but seemed to also walk through walls. We don't know exactly what it will be, but we know that Jesus has redeemed the, our entire person. And so it's, it's my prayer today as we continue to live in this life that we do not despair of the infirmities of which we receive. But let those draw us to prayer and a reminder that the Lord has redeemed all of us. And every ache and pain is a reminder of the redemption won by Jesus Christ. And that we will be redeemed completely, not just souls, but bodies for all eternity. It's good news for us. It is absolutely good news for us. And our culture is in deep need of an understanding of eternal salvation and that all of the propping up of our external bodies and all the things we do, they don't transfer to eternity. So my hope is as Christians, we are able to hand on to others that we don't have any fear of death. We have confidence in our Lord Jesus. Uh, but may that start with us knowing that the Lord has provided for eternity and that we should not have any fear of death, knowing that he has redeemed our entire person, body and soul. Amen.